Hello everyone! Today we are going to look at some boot sector assembly programming. Specifically, we are going to make a Hello World program. Now, before we get into that, what is a boot sector? A boot sector is this. Now, what is this? Well, let's look back into the past. When people use mechanical hard drives, which I know people still use them, but they're definitely not as popular as they used to be, they would have these magnetic disks in them, and each one was called a platter. And on each platter, you have two heads or two surfaces. You can kind of imagine it like a vinyl record, since those are coming back. If you look at them where the music is grooved in or cut into the discs, you can see the tracks. Now, uh, a track, also called a cylinder in the olden days, is exactly that. There are these rings that go around on your platters. And you can see when they're stacked how they would make a cylinder shape. Now, going back to this image with the disc sector, you can see that a sector is basically a slice, like a slice of pizza. The boot sector is specifically one of these little sections on the outside, which is going to be 512 bytes. That's right, half of a kilobyte. That is all that is allotted to you to boot up an operating system, essentially. Not a lot of space, but you can do a lot with that. Let's look at the startup here. When you start up your computer, you have power on, which means you hit the button, and it loads up the BIOS chip, the basic input output system. The BIOS will do a post, which means power on self test, which means it will check to make sure that there's a CPU present, that RAM's available, it can read to the RAM, that it's not incompatible. Uh, then it'll check for like a keyboard and a mouse, make sure that's there. And then after that, once it makes sure that everything it's expecting to be there, it will look for a hard drive or a floppy drive and check the boot sector. Now, you might remember back in the day when you would put a floppy disk in a computer and you would boot it up and it would say non-system disk found and you would go ah oh, that's right you got eject the floppy disk and then usually press any key to continue at that point it would look at your hard drive and boot up your operating system and it will say non-system disk found if that boot sectors 511 and 512 bytes are not set properly. And we'll get into that in a second. So the tools that you need, if you are on Windows, uh, you will want to install WSL, which is the Windows subsystem for Linux. And then you will want to go into your little app store or the Windows store or whatever it's called these days. And you will want to pull down Ubuntu for Windows. And that basically will give you the ability to run Linux on top of Windows. Um, to follow this tutorial, um, you will also want to install Visual Studio Code. Now, if you already are running on Linux, uh, that's great. You're already ready to go, especially if you have Debian or Ubuntu or I'm using Linux Mint which is built on top of Ubuntu. And once you start up Visual Studio Code and on Windows, you'll need to use the WSL plugin and you'll see a screen similar to this. Um, basically, you'll need Visual Studio Code up and running if you want to follow this tutorial exactly. Um, otherwise, you can use your favorite editor now the tools that you will need to use to follow this again are going to be FASM or Flat Assembler and I'm guessing it's pronounced Queemu. 
or QEMU or something, it's uh, emulator. And the reason for that is uh, your computer probably doesn't have a floppy drive in it. So you probably won't be writing to an actual physical floppy drive and turning your computer off, putting the floppy in, and turning it back on to test what you've done. You'll want to use an emulator instead. It makes it a lot easier. Now on Ubuntu distributions to install that, you just do sudo apt install phasm and then QEMU. If you hit tab, you'll start getting auto completion and we'll do system. Oh, if you hit tab twice, it will give you this whole list. Tab once will do auto complete and I'll do X. And just to show you what I mean, if I hit tab here, I get 86. You hit enter on this and it will install it. I already have it installed, so we are good to go that way. Now just to prove, uh, or mainly to show what uh, the emulator looks like when you don't put anything in, we will just run it. And you can see booting from hard disk, boot failed, could not read the boot disk, floppy could not read it, CD-ROM, um, it, it, it didn't find anything to boot off of, now it started looking for a network card and it decided that there's nothing to boot so there are no bootable devices. All right, that makes sense because we haven't created one yet. So let's create a bootable file that's still basically empty. Now, when the BIOS starts looking, it will start looking at the address 7C00. And that's why we're using assembly, besides the fact that you have very finite control over um, everything in assembly so you can make sure that the program's laid out exactly the way you want. Uh, we will say our origin point is 7C00. And this will be redundant, but I'll say use 16-bit, which is going to be real mode. The reason it's redundant is Phasm has the ability to determine that for you. It, it knows basically what you're looking for. All right, so we have our origin point. Now let's fill up our file. We'll do 510. And I'll explain this in a second. All right, what does this mean? Well, it means this. It means our program's going to start at this specific memory address. Then after that, we are going to say, take the number 510, start at our current address. So whatever this address is in memory, go to the beginning of the section, or in this case, the beginning of the program and then write a byte, a null byte, a zero, basically give us a zero. So this will give us 510 zeros for what we have right here because there's nothing in between here. Why 510 and not 512? Well, the reason for that is we're going to write AA55 to the last bit of our file here. So we have two bytes here, so that's why it's not 512, it's 510, because 510 plus this two is 512. So let's assemble that real quick. It says everything's okay, created a binary file. Let's look at it with our hex editor. Now that is an extension that I added to my Visual Studio Code here. And if you type in ASM, you can start to find um, some things to help you with color coding. 
I am using uh, this one. And then I also added this hex editor so that I could view the files as they're being written. So we can see there's a bunch of zeros. There should be 510 bytes of zeros, and then it's 55AA, which is interesting, right? Because we put AA55. Well, the reason for that is x86 processors are called little endian processors. And that basically means that they store the small amount first from small to large. Um, and there, there's, a, there's a fairly good reason for that. I guess I can digress quickly. Um, just put in a comment here. So if I were to put in this number uh, in normal decimal English, whatever, and I said, I'm going to give you six buckets and you can put two numbers in each bucket. So let's uh, just make a little ASCII table here. So we have one bucket, two, three, four, five, six. All right. And let's say you do it this way. You're going to do it the, the normal way that anybody probably would do it. Uh, all right. Having some problems typing here for some reason. There we go. And this is great. So let's say this is our memory address one, memory address two, memory address three, four, five, six, a or bucket one, two, three, four, five, six, whatever you want to do. And let's say I have the ability to take two buckets and I want the smallest number. Now in real life, this would be like in C or C++ if you have an integer and you want to convert it to a short or to a char you would say, okay, an integer can hold four bytes of information and I want to put into a short, which can only hold two. Um, in this case, I'm saying I have six buckets and I want to make it only two buckets. I'm making it a smaller number. So that means that the number I'm expecting is going to be 7,890. So which buckets do you have to give me? Well, you would have to give me four and five. Well, that's kind of weird because what about one and two? Why? Why? Well, that's that. That'd be a one thousand two hundred thirty-four. That that's the wrong number. And five and six would be ninety and an empty bucket. So I guess that's probably like the same thing as saying that. So nine thousand. That doesn't make sense either. Hmm. Well, I mean, you could come up with a math equation that goes, originally this memory was six buckets wide, since we're using buckets as our container in this case. And I want to go down to two, but I only had five of those buckets filled. And um, it, this starts getting pretty mathematical pretty quickly. What if there was an easier way? Well, there is. And that is storing things from least to greatest. So we have, oops, yeah, actually, no, that's right. 78. Come on here. There we go, 56. 34, 12, and that's empty. Okay, now if we are reading this from left to right, which we are, it's still 
a little confusing because now 90 is in bucket one and 78 is in bucket two and 56 is in bucket three. But bear with me. It, it'll, it'll become clearer and then I'll come up with an analogy to sort of help you visualize in your mind a way that you can kind of view this. So if I say I want, let's just say one bucket, I want it to be the equivalent of like a char. I want the smallest, the smallest byte, the smallest thing you can give me, the smallest two numbers in this case, you'd give me bucket one, which is 90. Great. Now let's say I want two, like I originally said, you'd give me bucket one and bucket two. Now I read the buckets the same way that you have them set up. So I realize that 9078 in my mind means 7,890. And if I wanted three buckets, you would give them me one, two, and three. And I would realize that 56 is the largest and then 78 and then 90. So it'd be um, 567,890. That sounds right. Um, and you might be thinking, okay, well, I can see how this would make it easier for a computer because I don't need to do math to figure out which buckets to pass you. But this is still kind of hard to visualize, right? And part of that is for numbers being led least to greatest, they're read right to left. But in English, we read left to right. Now, if you spoke Hebrew or wrote Hebrew, I guess, uh, this would probably be very easy for you to visualize because they read the other direction than we normally do. So uh, this is not Hebrew by any means, but in English we would write this word meaning hello, and in Hebrew they essentially would write the word this way and they would read it this way from right to left. So in English, we would say hello, one, two, three, four. In Hebrew, this would be written one, two, three, four. Wrap my brain around that. It'd be written this way. Well, now if you're a computer, let's say that you read things right to left. And that means that I'm going to get rid of this table because this is, at this point, not helpful for this analogy. So in your first container, you have a H, and then you have an E, an L, an L, an O, a space, and then the number four, number three, number two, number one. So if I said, give me the first three letters of hello, you would get H-E-L. And the reason for that is because you're reading from right to left. Now, if I say, give me the smallest three digits, you would get four, three, two, or the smallest two, four, three. So if you want to imagine why this, well, you've seen why it works with the bucket analogy. It, it's much easier to just hand you the first bucket than it is to do all this complicated math and figure out which bucket I actually need to hand you. Now when you read right to left, you can see how um, you can kind of conceptualize it. And if you do know Hebrew, you are good to go. If there's another language that reads right to left, maybe Chinese sometimes, I don't know. Um, you're, you're able to look at this as well and go, oh, that, that makes, that makes sense. If you only know English or you only know Western languages, um, it's a little bit of a stretch of the mind, but I hope that this helps give you at least a word picture that you can picture in your mind. So now back to our little hex viewer. This is reading left to right because that is the way uh, most people 
visualize this. And the reason this is 55AA, again, is because we are saying to pass in a word, AA55. And let's get into that next. So we have DB, that's the data, and it's a byte-sized data, which means it will fill one of these containers, which is why we said fill 510 because these are these are basically going to come out to zero. So 510 minus zero is 510. Fill 510 bytes with the number zero. So it did 510 of these. Then we get to a word, a data word. I usually assume D means data. It might mean something else, but word. Now a word is two bytes. So 16 bits, two bytes, and that means fill two of these containers, but fill it little Indian style. So put the smallest one first, second one larger. If we were to make this DD for a du double word, data double word, then it would be 32 bits or four bytes. And if we did DQ, that would be a quad word, which would be 64 bit, and that would give us eight bytes. So then you would have eight of these going across in basically reverse order if you want to think of it that way. Uh, why AA and 55? Well, I, from what I've heard, the reason for that in binary is one of them is like 101010101 or something like that, and the other one is 0101. So they they alternate, and, and programmers always enjoy these these neat little word or number patterns. Okay, so that, that bogged us down a little bit more, but I hope that helps explain some of these things. If you're new to assembly, um, hopefully these the, help give you a little bit of an idea of what's going on and you're not just going, I can't get over the fact you put AA55 and here it's 55AA. How is that possible? I need to stop and figure this out. Hopefully you you understand that a little bit more now too. Uh, I'm not going to really get into counting in hexadecimal in this. I might make another video on that. I'm really promising a lot of videos here. But um, uh, just know that that's a hexadecimal number. So uh, next on our little agenda here, we have made our empty file. Now what we're going to do is make a make file. Uh, we could keep typing things in the command line here, but um, why not learn yet another new thing? So I'm going to make a file, call it make file. Don't capitalize the F. I've done that. Doesn't work. All right. And here I'm going to just create a target called all. And that is going to be what we typed in before. It's just a command that says assemble our hello.assemble or assembly file. And then I'm also going to do a run target. And this is going to be our emulator call. I'm going to include drive format. It's going to be a raw format. It will assume that for us, but it'll give us an error or a warning every single time saying, I'm assuming raw and I shouldn't be assuming that. So we will tell it, yes, you're right. It, it is raw. And file is going to equal hello.binary. So let's actually, let's just make it and try it. So we're going to make it, it assembled it, make run, it spins it up. Now you remember before how it gave us all those errors, not a bootable disk, not a bootable disk, not a bootable disk or device. It doesn't say that anymore. And that's because it recognizes that it's bootable. It's just that it doesn't tell it to do anything. So what we need to do is we need to actually start doing stuff. So the first thing we're going to do is we are going to move into the high end of our register 
the hexadecimal number three. And I guess when they're this small, they're all the same numbers, but we'll stick with hex. And again, that's what the zero X means. It means this is a hexadecimal number, not a decimal number. If it didn't have that, it assumes decimal. If it ends with a B, it's binary. Um, but anyway, we're putting the number three into the high end of our AX register. And then we're going to call interrupt 10 H. And I might get into more details on assembly um, and maybe even a next video just explaining what these registers are, um, what's the high end, the low end, things like that. Um, but if we look at our interrupt call, we can see that three is, uh, yes, that is not the right thing. I want to set our video mode to three. So good thing I looked at that. We're going to put three into the top and in the bottom we are going to put or sorry zero in the top three in the bottom now this is not good programming etiquette by any means and it sounds like i'm about to talk about registers and i am all right so in 16-bit mode registers are 16 bits or two bytes what that means is that um, each register is two bytes, and you can think of a register as basically a variable, I guess in a way, a very high speed variable. And some of them have special purposes, and in x86 they're named A, B, C, D, S, I guess, S, I. Um, PC, BP, things like that. Um, anyway, though, um, you have a high end and a low end. Now, if you want to think of this um, like this origin point, we have 0x, 0, 0, 0, 0, 3. Um, sorry, just 0, 3. Um, and that means that our first byte is zero. Our second one is three. And if you look at on Wikipedia, they have the BIOS interrupt calls. That means that in AH, if you set zero, what you're going to get is you're going to get um, the ability to set your video mode and we're setting our video mode to mode three, which means a text display, basically. That's what it means. We're showing text. We're not um, able to write pixels and, and do that. That um, The ability to do that is in different video mode. And again, we may cover that in the future. But um, the reason I originally put in 00 and 03 is because I was thinking of this. And the reason for that is, especially with letters, you need to put in a zero first if you use the H. And you are able to do that in here. Um, 0x03 zero zero is the same thing as writing 0. Make sure I got this right. 003H. Yes. Um, some people like that. I personally prefer this format because it's clearer to me exactly what's going on. Now, I said that you normally wouldn't do it this way. And let's look at why. Let's assemble this real quick and look at it in our editor. So you can see here that we have B4 and after B4 we are setting it to 0 
and then we have B0 and we're setting it to 3 and then after that this is interrupt 10 so um, yeah that's the cool thing about assembly is each thing means something in hexadecimal the reason you don't do this is this is one two three four bytes and we have 512 to work with total so instead of doing a h a l what we're going to do is a x a x is a way of saying the two combined not just the top end or the high end and not just the low end but both of them combined and let's assemble that again now remember before we had four now we have b8 Zero 03, because remember, the little stuff comes before the big stuff. We talked about that, little endian. So we have our 3, then we have our 0. Then we have our interrupt, and we have 10. So we have 1, 2, 3, instead of 1, 2, 3, 4. Now, it might seem picky, but again, we're working with a very small amount of data here. So we want to use the least number of bytes possible so we don't run out of them. So what we've done now is we have said put into AX the number 3 and then call interrupt 10 now what interrupts are I'm gonna just actually comment this real quick set video mode to 3 and I didn't I didn't look this up ahead of time sorry about that video modes assembly you can see here that um, zero mode is going to give us um, 40 characters by 25 characters 16 gray is probably a gray scale it's not just black and white it's gonna be gray scale then after that you have 40 by 25 in color and then after that we have 80 by 25 gray and then video mode 3 which is the one we care about is going to be 80 by 25 so we have 80 characters across our screen 25 going down our screen 16-bit color all right so back to this video mode 3 which was 80 by 25 16-bit color okay and we are not writing anything to our screen so this should just clear the screen for us there we go you remember before there's a bunch of words now there's not all right now we should probably properly end our program and to do that we're going to do clear the interrupt flag which basically means um, stop using interrupts and we're going to tell the system to halt so that's kind of going to be our end of the program kind of like a return zero in your int main function so I want to talk about this times thing the double dollar sign is going to be basically the beginning of our program which is going to be this address right here but when we look at our little drawing we'll, we'll just say it's zero 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 everything's all zeros it's it's the zero address for sake of argument and the dollar sign means our current line of where we are at or the current memory block which is going to be, let me assemble this. There we go. Which is going to be right here. So our FA, F4 is going to be FA, F4. Kind of makes you wonder if Alt F4 that closes windows was picked because of that. I, I wonder now. Why? I always wondered why F4. I wonder if it's a callback 
to the good old days when F4 meant halt program. But anyway, so we're at this address here, this um, seventh memory address, um, zeroth row. So we're, we're seven on from here. So when we take 510 minus seven, we're gonna get 503. So it's gonna take 503 and it's going to repeat that 503 times they get us here and then we already talked about the signature at the end so the beauty of this is if we do go over our 510 bytes that we have to work with it'll give us like negative 5 negative 10 negative something whatever that number is and it can't do something negative times so it, the assembler will yell at us and say you've gone over your memory basically and um, start writing your code better. It won't tell you that, but that's what it means. <laughs> so we have a cleared screen. So let's move forward. Now in AH, we are going to put in, I believe it is E. And let's just double check that. E is write character in TTY mode, which is the mode we are currently in. So yes, we want to put AH to E. And let's just move into AL, the letter H. And we will call interrupt 10H. And we'll put in the letter E. Ten H. That's funny, I just occurred to me that I keep using ten H instead of zero X ten. Well, you know what? Just to prove that they are synonymous, I will do that. They, these two things mean the same thing. Run that, make run, and we get HE on our screen. Cool! So what that did is it's basically said, display the letter H, display the letter E. Now, <clears throat> you might be starting to notice a pattern here. AH is kind of like a function in C, in a way, and AL is its first parameter. The only thing is to call it, we have our interrupt and we call interrupt 10 and it, it says whatever is in our A register, do it. And I just remembered I was going to explain the interrupt and then I got distracted with our video mode stuff. What an interrupt is basically is an interrupt is kind of like a stick and you poke the BIOS and you say, hey, I want you to do something. And it goes, oh, OK, I will look in our A register and do whatever you are telling me to do there. And it looks at AH and it goes, oh, you're telling me to run function E. And that takes one parameter and that parameter has the letter or character H in it. OK, I will display that on the screen for you. Now there are a whole bunch of different interrupts and uh, all these little functions or sub functions, however you want to think about them, these all pertain to the 10 interrupt. But there's other ones too. If you want to start dealing with disk stuff, there's the 13 interrupt. And if you want to deal with serial ports, there's the 14 and the 15 and there's, there's a few of them, um, needless to say. so. Uh, we are working with video stuff, so we're dealing with the 10 interrupt. Let's do a loop, though, because this obviously is tedious doing one letter at a time, doing code, and we also, we're going to be hitting our head pretty soon here. So, well, eventually soon, maybe not pretty soon, but eventually soon. So let's put in here a message. 
and it's going to be an array of bytes and those arrays happen to say hello world comma zero now what is a label a label is well it's basically a symbol if you've heard that word before but it's uh like a bookmark i guess it, it's a spot in memory that says at this address keep track of this address for me um kind of like a pointer a pointer holds an address for you uh except this quote unquote pointer msg doesn't actually appear anywhere in the binary file um but anyway we're saying that this pointer or array is an array of characters, an array of bytes, and the first one's an H, then we have an E, an L, an L, an O, a space, as well as world, and then the last um, byte is a null byte, a zero byte, and you'll know in C that your C strings always end with a null character, and that's what this is because of what we are about to do. So I'm going to change this logic just a tad. And what we're going to do is we're going to work with another register. And that register is the SI register. And it's going to be set to the address of message. And then I'm going to create a display loop. Ta-da, we have another label. And in this display loop, I'm going to do load string and it's going to be a byte size what this does is it says look at our si register probably means stack index if i had to guess but look at our si register and take whatever memory address it is which will be pointing to this h and store it into AL for us, and then increment SI by one. So that one little command does quite a bit of work for us. So the address at SI, store its value in AL, increment SI by one. Cool. Okay. Well, now that that is done, what we are going to do is we no longer need to be moving that letter in there. But we need to do a little bit more logic. We won't get there quite yet. We'll do this. We'll put in here a jump to display loop. So let's step through this real quick in our in our brain. What we are doing is we have a h set to this um, to our little method e, which is technically the number ten. Um, here in our high end of our register. We're saying essentially load the letter H into AL and then we're saying display it. And then we're saying go back, which is like a go to basically, jump back to this, load E, display it, load L, display it, load L, display it, O, we get through everything, zero, display it, and then what happens? Well, we're going to have a lot of zeros, so it's on the display, I'm guessing, a lot of zeros. And then after that, it's going to get to these, this 5-5 five five and this AA, which are the characters U and tiny a with an underline under it, I guess. Um, I guess display that, and then after that it will keep trying to run, and 
I'm guessing it'll access this memory that we don't have access to and it'll probably freeze because I don't think we have uh, we're not at the point where it can actually detect that you're going into memory you shouldn't be but I imagine it will freeze um, yeah so bad things will happen how do we prevent it from overflowing well we need to find a way to check if this is zero so if H is loaded into AL, great, do your job. If zero is loaded in, stop, we want to go somewhere else. And actually where we want to go is this, this halt label. We want to halt um, our process and, and end our program basically. Now, the way we're going to see if AL is zero is we're going to use the OR. We're going to do AL. AL. And basically what this is saying is take all of the bits in AL and OR them with all of the bits in AL. Which means we're going to get exactly the same number because technically everything behind the scenes is a number and it's going to give us the exact same number that we had before. But in the process, what it will do is it will check and see if that number is zero. So if that if AL is zero and you OR it with AL and it's also zero because they're both the same, it will set the zero flag for us saying, hey, the last thing I did gave me a zero. Anything else will not set the zero flag. So we're going to say jump if it's zero to halt. So if it's H, it's not zero, it ignores this jump and it does what we want. If it's E, it ignores it, L's, it ignores it, finally gets a zero, it's gonna set the zero flag, jump to halt, end our program for us. Hopefully that makes sense. Make run, hello world. Look at that. So at this point, we basically are done. We have displayed Hello World on our screen. So I hope you enjoyed everything that you have seen here. Please subscribe. Please like it. And look forward to seeing you in the next video.